Howdy everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at one of the applications of Tinkercad. Tinkercad is useful for a whole slew of different things and it's not just useful for uh, basic CAD design. It has a lot of different applications that you can use that are fairly advanced. And today we'll be looking at how to create molds in Tinkercad. It's a fairly easy concept to grasp, but it's a useful tool. So we'll create our new design. And we'll still just be using our basic shapes. In a future tutorial, I'll go through all of these. So to start out, we'll go all the way to the bottom. You can see you have a whole slew of shapes. So I would encourage all of you to, at home, play around with all of these shapes and familiarize yourself with all of them. We'll be using an icosahedron. You can't modify anything except the length, width, and height of this object. So I would keep it as is. Now we'll select two boxes. To do that, we'll press Ctrl D on our keyboard when we're selecting the box. You can see a flash there. And now when we shift out, we have our box. To move objects around, you can just left click on them and move your mouse around and that moves them. Now what we need to do is convert both of these into holes. And now as holes, you can see through them. And that's important, and I'll show you why in just a second. First step is you need to align them. So go here, and you can either press L on your keyboard, or you can go to, up to this key here. We'll align them only on the supposed Y axis. Um, Tinkercad does not have preset X, Y, and Z axis. So this would be your X axis. This would be your Y axis. and Vertically would be, again, your z-axis. Now that those are aligned, we can center both the icosahedron and one of our boxes, pressing L on our keyboard, and centering them on both the x and the y-axis. You don't want to center it on the z-axis, but you do want it at the top. So now like that, that makes it a little bit easier for us to select the box, Press, press Ctrl H to hide it. Select our icosahedron, and then press Ctrl Shift H to show it again. Now you can see we've selected the icosahedron inside of our box. We can shift this up just a bit. It doesn't need to be exact, but make sure it's roughly in the center of your box. Now we see that's a little bit too tall. So let's shift around. Let's shorten our box a bit. And then going back again, we'll go to our front view and make sure you're in orthographic view for this. You can switch between perspective and orthographic. Orthographic shows a straight line and perspective shows a bent line. Now we'll take this shape and we'll move it down until it's about midway. Now what we'll do is we'll delete our first box since we changed it. We'll select our initial box say control D on our keyboard and then shift this up until it's sitting right on top. Now you can see if we switch back to perspective view that these are aligned directly on top of one another with the icosahedron placed in the middle. Now what we need to do is we need to hide the top portion of our mold. We'll select that top portion again selecting control H on your keyboard to hide that. We'll select our icosahedron and now we'll select control D on our keyboard to duplicate it. Now what we need to do is select one of the icosahedrons, conform it into a hole, select the bottom portion of your mold and change that into a solid. Now select the whole version of the icosahedron and the box and pressing control G on your keyboard to join them. You can also use these keys up here to join and unjoin objects but we'll just select on our keyboard because that's a lot easier. Now with the bottom portion of our mold selected, we'll sele again select Control H on our keyboard to hide it. Press Control Shift H to show everything. And again, Control H to hide that bottom portion of the box. Now select the top portion, make that a solid, select the icosahedron and make it into a hole. Now using the left button on your mouse, you can create a box select Select all of your objects and press Ctrl G on your keyboard to join them. Now you can see we have a mold made of our icosahedron. 
press Control shift h to show everything again. And now, selecting the top portion of our mold, we'll shift that off. Using this rotating dialog, rotate it 180 degrees, select it again, and then select this top arrow here to move it all the way down. And now you can see that dialog over to the right shows zero. You can see this shows from the base plate up to the box. Now, if we go and we look around, you can see we have exact mold of our ICOC tree. This is good if you're using silicone, epoxy, and it really doesn't matter. This is gonna make a perfect mold of your object. Now align these on just the horizontal axis, not the vertical. And then what you're gonna to want to do is create pins so that your molds align perfectly when you put them together. So create a cylinder, and then select one of these corner pieces to edit both the length and the width simultaneously. Select here, and, set, and shape that to three millimeters. Then change the other dialog to three millimeters as well. Now what you can do is go into your orthographic view, select the top, and then move this roughly to the pin here. Select both the pin and one of the sides of your molds. Press L on your keyboard to align them. And then select the edge aligns, right there and right there. Now select it directly at the topmost and the rightmost portion of our mold. What we need to do now is move this two millimeters to the left and two millimeters down to create some clearance for the other side of the mold. So on our keypad, we have your up down arrow, down arrow, left arrow, and right arrow. You can just press the left arrow twice to move that two millimeters, and the down arrow twice to move that two millimeters that way. We do need to make sure that it's not intersecting the actual mold portion. And we see that it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to one millimeter of clearance. So we're pressing the up arrow and the right arrow once each. And now you can see we have one millimeter of clearance on either side. Now pressing that pin and pressing control duplicate. Now selecting the box, press control L on your keyboard, select down and select right. Now select the pin and move it over to the right one and up one. Now select both pins. Instead of having to duplicate one pin at a time, you can select both, press control D and then press your box, align it over to the left, then select both of the leftmost pins, and press the right numpad to move it over to the right one millimeter. Now you can see we have a box of pins, and then if we change this into a hole, we see they extend all the way down. Our box is exactly 13 millimeters tall, and our pins are all 20 meters, 20 millimeters tall. So we know that there's seven millimeters from the top of the pin to the box. And that's important for later usage, so we'll copy all of our pins, pressing Control D on our keyboard, and then moving them over until they're centered with our other box using the left num key. You see we can align them roughly in the middle but we see they don't align perfectly. So what we'll do is we'll select all of our pins and we'll select our box. We'll align it over to the left and then we'll move these pins over one. We'll select the other pins and the box and align these over to the right. Then we'll select these two pins and move them over to the left one. Now you can see we have two sets of pins. However, we don't need these two sets of pins. So what we'll do, we remember we have seven millimeters from the top of the pin to the box. So we'll select all these pins and make them seven millimeters tall. You see this dialog opens up. We can click this dialog and click seven on our keypad. Now pressing enter. We can see those shift down and we can't see them anymore, which what we're gonna do is we're going to click our box, press Control H to hide it, using the left mouse button to select all of them. We'll shift those up a lot. 
Then we'll press Control Shift H to see our box again. And now what we'll do is we'll make our box into a solid. We'll make sure that's a solid. Then we'll change all of our top pins into holes. Now switching to our front orthographic view and scrolling out. We'll shift these down until they're flush with the top of our box. You can see there's a blue outline just at the top and that makes sure they're flush. Now you can see there's a bit of interference which makes sure they're absolutely flush. And then we can join everything together. So we'll select just our initial top box using the box select with our mouse with our left mouse key and select control G to join them. Then moving that out a bit, we'll select our other box and all the pins and press control G to join those. As you can see, now we have a perfect mold set up. If you're making this in aluminum with a CNC machine, this will work. And also if you're 3D printing this, this will also work. When you make this out of silicone, epoxy, or any other curing material, this will make an exact replica of your ecosahedron with no lines, no misshapes, and everything perfectly lined up. This is a great use of Tinkercad, and I encourage you to play around by yourself in Tinkercad, and tune into my next tutorials. Remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out as a small creator to know that I have a good base and that I'm teaching a lot of people. So please share this channel with your friends and family, and have a good day.